What's happening, YouTube? This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Down at Accurate Engines, we're doing a radiator in a 2010 Ford F-150. This has a 5.4 in it, but I do know that the later models up to 2017, maybe even 18 or 19 F-150s with the 3.5 dual turbo setup is primarily the same. The thing that I'm going to focus on in this video and let you know right now, you don't have to undo the air conditioner. Oh, Clayboy is going to show you a way to do it without doing that. Is it going to be a little bit harder? Yes. Is it going to add about 30 minutes to the job? Yes, it will. And it will make it not as easy to get out. But remember, I'm saving you some money from not having to take it down to the shop and having the AC evacuated and recharged. So if this video ends up being helpful for you, please consider getting a hold of me down here at Accurate Engines the next time you need a new engine and get a Clayway Premium Plus engine. Also, remember, if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. That I'm absolutely sure of. Believe me, you don't need much to do this job. It's pretty simple. If you've got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I answer them absolutely for free for everyone that I possibly can. I don't know at all. But there's quite a few folks down here at Acura Engines. They're a little bit smarter than me. And maybe they know the answer if I don't. Now... We can push these clips over and loosen up one flathead screw. Now we should be able to pull the whole air box up and over and out. I couldn't get this with my fingers, so I took a screwdriver and pushed the lock back. Now pushing down on the center clip, I can remove it. Now we're going to remove two 13 millimeter bolts from right here that hold this whole unit here. Okay, now we're gonna remove this hose, which is the overflow hose and goes over to our coolant tank. We're gonna lift up on this air filter and I just dropped my screws down inside there. And we're gonna pull this right up out of the way and we can actually remove this from the vehicle completely. Now we have three of these clamps that I'm gonna unhook. I'm not so sure that the other two are necessary, but this one, just take a screwdriver, pop it in and out of there, and then you're able to take that off. Eventually we're gonna end up removing that line from up here, here to get it out of the way. And then I had two more that I did down here. Oops. Now we need to remove the upper radiator hose, and to do that, we can use several different types of tools. In this situation, I'm gonna use these, but they do make these sweet, nifty things that when you squeeze on the clamp, it locks, so you're able to move it off of here. And just as a suggestion, you can take some PB Blaster, put it on the hose, if you're gonna to need to move the hose clamp off, but hopefully, all I have to do, and I'm not sure if this is gonna work for film, So all we have to do is with one arm, squeeze that, and with the other arm, pull the hose backwards. I know it'll work for me. Now taking a 10 millimeter, we're gonna remove the four bolts that hold on our fuse box to the bulkhead. Now we can take a needle nose pair of pliers or clip removers and start removing the clips that hold our electrical connector on here. Removing enough clips so we can pick up our fuse box and move it off to the front of the engine out of our way. Okay, so now we're gonna take an eight millimeter and remove our positive side of our battery cable and you can remove the negative if you feel like you're unsure. Then we're gonna start pulling out all the little clips that hold everything on. Now taking an 11 millimeter, we're gonna remove the stud. We're gonna lift up this wire right here and take it out of the wire loom that's connected to the top of the stud. And then we're gonna remove the stud out of there, moving the power steering reservoir off to the side. Okay, we're gonna remove these rubber housings right here. We can do that with a set of pliers and we get up underneath here and we pull on these and you pull little pushies out. You kind of work them out of there just a little bit, prying them back. You can also remove the screws right here just so you know, there's a right and a left to these rubber flaps. So don't get them mixed up if you take them completely off. Okay, so we need to take out this little clip down here that is on the end of the 
radiator hose. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get it worked around there and then pull up on the clip and then I should be able to use a pick tool and pop that bad lad out of there. So I tried a couple different things, but ended up going back to the flathead screwdriver, ended up working the best. Okay, now we wanna take the clip and set it off to a safe place. Now making sure that we have our catch pan in the proper place, we can start wiggling the hose back and forth and we can take a pry bar and put it right here to help us push that off of there. It is not absolutely necessary to push it all the way off with the pry bar. Just get it worked back enough so you can pull it out with your hand. I just gently wiggle it. There, it doesn't have to be super, super hard. Push it off, good to go. Now we can push that up underneath the ABS controller and bring it back around. Okay, so when you get this off of here, you wanna make sure that that O-ring is down inside there. That's the red one that I'm trying to finagle my hands to show you right here. And you might as well go ahead and put the clip back inside here. And that goes down inside the little slit that's right here. Remember when you took it off, it was closer to the top. Now, the reason that you put the clip back in there is so when you go to reconnect it, you can quite simply just push it back in. Okay, now going down to the fans, we're gonna unplug them. And they have a little clip down here that we unplug and we pull them back. Just for a note, when you go to install these, you shouldn't have to twist these connectors. There is a high and low fan on here. So we wanna make it go in there the same way that it came out. And it should just simply quite go back in there pretty easily on both sides. Okay, so these were held on by these tabs and you seeing it outside the vehicle is a lot easier to show you but you're gonna push down on them tabs and you'll pull the connectors back. If you ever get into a situation where you can't get a connector to come off on the, the vehicle and you've pushed on the tabs, make sure you shove it towards the component and then sharply pull it back quickly. That'll make it simpler to get these off. Now, we've got two eight millimeter screws down here on the bottom of our fan shroud, holding our fan shroud on. Take it out, slide it over this way, bring it up this way, bring it down and around our lines, and take it out. Now, with the radiator loose, we need to remove this power steering line to get it out of the way so we can work. Now we have two 13 millimeter bolts that we need to remove from each corner of the radiator. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the hoses that are fixed to the front of the radiator. And there's several ways that we can actually do this. We can do this with some needle nose pliers, squeeze the clamp, these are trim tools, and these are plier locking clamps. And these have various uses. In this situation, I'm actually gonna use a line clamp that squeezes the clamp down and pushes it together so then you can slide it off of the line. Now with the clip slid back, we can either take a pair of needle nose pliers and push it off of the line this way, or we can use hose pliers and squeeze into it. You wanna make sure that the hose pliers that you use are not too small and cut holes in your line. Okay, so now we're ready to remove the radiator. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a flathead screwdriver, especially if you're working by yourself, and I'm gonna show you how that's gonna come in useful. Right down here on the bottom, we have two little clips that we need to push in to disconnect the radiator from the condenser and the transmission cooler. Okay, so these little pushies back here, they push in. And as you push them in, you're gonna raise up on the radiator. And we're gonna need two hands to be able to do that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our thumb on our right hand and we're gonna push in on this right here. And as we push that down, we're gonna pull up on the bottom of our condenser. And we're gonna try to pull it back towards us like this. And as it raises up, there's gonna be a pocket that it's gonna slip up out of here. So sometimes we might need to take our hand and put it above here and push away on our radiator back there. All right, so on this side, and this also holds true. You can take a screwdriver if you're working by yourself 
And once you push this little clip and you pull this up a little bit, you can wedge that screwdriver underneath there. Luckily, on the other side, we were able to get ours to go up, so that's not gonna be necessary. Now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna push in on the plastic clip, and at the same time, we're gonna try to lift up on this condenser, and you're kind of pushing away on the radiator, and it's a real serious bump. But if you take your other right arm and you push down on the top of the radiator, and you wiggle it just a little bit, and then you pull it back towards you, hopefully you've got it all the way out of there, and you can start to remove the radiator. All right, so now that we've got the condenser released from the radiator, hopefully we can just pull these little tabs back to allow the condenser and stuff to separate. Unhooking the evaporator and such, we should be able to pull the radiator out and move it over to the side, making sure that any lines that are getting hung up on our on our radiator are moved out of the way. Okay, when you remove your radiator, you need to make sure it has these rubber grommets on here after you remove it and before you install it. Because if you don't, it will crack the radiator right here and the radiator won't sit inside the vehicle properly. Other than the two rubber bungs, we need to make sure that we have these clips inserted into our new radiator. Sometimes they come in the package and sometimes you have to take them out of the original radiator that you removed. Okay, so installation of the radiator is actually really simple, except you're gonna need to use all your bionic arms that you have to put this sucker back in here. We're gonna make sure that we look down on the inside of the vehicle, make sure all of our lines aren't in there, just take your time. When you're reinstalling this, it can seem to be encompassing, but everything past the reinstallation is super simple. And if you take your time, I'll guarantee you'll be successful. Okay, so when you're going to install this, we're gonna install it down like this, and then over like this. The reason that we're doing that is so we can get these cables above this channel right here. And, there's more room to move it over here. Once you come over to here, you can make sure all your cords and et cetera and your power steering thing that you should have bungeed up that I didn't bungee up is out of the way and you're able to get to sit down in the slots. Okay, so now we, the hardest other challenge that we have is we need to insert our condenser and such into our radiator. So we have to lift the whole condenser and radiator up. We can push it back, then slide it over, push it in, and make sure it drops into both channels, the top channel and the lower channel at the same time. And we can take one of our hands and pull our radiator towards the condenser, pushing our palm at the bottom, and then hopefully clip it in and also go to the other side and do that as well. Once, now on the other side, because the other side is not clipped in yet, we need to do the same thing. We need to push it up, pull our radiator to, to it, and then our other side will drop in, and hopefully we can drop in this side as well. Now I simply moved it up, pushed it back, and then I drop it in and it clicks into place. Now they're connected together. Now we're gonna ensure that our condensers dropped into our radiator correct, correctly and our clips are pushed out and covering the condenser assembly. And then the rest of the assembly should be a breeze. We just need to connect everything up and add our coolant, burping the system out. Okay, so now we're gonna fill the vehicle with the appropriate coolant. What I've done is I filled the vehicle up until it came up to here. Now I'm gonna fill my bucket about halfway full, start the engine, 
let it run up to operating temperature so the thermostat opens and it sucks more coolant inside the engine. That's about the level that I want the coolant to be when I start the engine up. Now we're gonna quite simply let the engine run and it's gonna take in some of the coolant. It might actually push the coolant up as the engine gets harder, hotter before the thermostat actually opens. With the engine running, it's very common to get these bubbles to come up. But if these bubbles don't stop coming up, you might have other issues like a bad head gasket or something like that. And I surely hope you don't have any of them situations going on. Now, this is about five to seven minutes after it's been running. Now, we didn't take the coolant out of the engine block, so we shouldn't have a, a really large difference between volume of what we're gonna need to replace in here once the thermostat opens. But you will know when the thermostat opens because this coolant level will either drop or it'll rise up and we can look at the indicator on the dash. Now it's not 100% necessary to sit here and wait for the thermostat to open and spend all this time. We could drive the vehicle and if you're driving the vehicle and your gauge goes up and then comes down a couple moments later, and does that and you have a lapse of heat during that time, that means that there's not coolant on the sensor and it's creating a bubble inside your heater core. In this situation, the reason that we're using this hopper is because this actually puts the coolant higher than the heater core inside the vehicle, allowing the air to escape from the heater core hoses because the heater core hoses are generally pretty close to the top of the engine as far as their level with the engine and that's generally where air gets trapped at and causes lack of efficient heating. I don't know what I was thinking, but it was down to where there was only like a little bit of fluid down at the very bottom of there and I put a little bit more in there when it was off camera. So it did take a little bit in and we've ran it for about 15 minutes now while I was walking around cleaning everything up. Now we should check the heat on the inside of the vehicle and see how good it is. So now we're gonna go ahead and fill up our reservoir to the cold mark here on there with the appropriate coolant. We're gonna move the vehicle into a dry spot and we're gonna look underneath it and make sure we don't have any little drips like that one right there. That's what we don't wanna see. Where's that dripping from? Could that just be something that spilt or is it actually got a leak? I'm pretty certain that's actually just something that spilt a little bit when I was pulling the reservoir off of the radiator but we're gonna check it just to make sure luckily for me that little drip was just the overflow hose I thought I put it on there but I must not have so make sure you get that back on there well it's ran for a while we checked the heat on the inside and it's working great I'll tell you so remember if anyone else can do it you can do it too if you've got a question for me, hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I certainly try to answer them. And if you ever need anything done to your vehicle, check me out down here at Accurate Engines in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'll certainly try to help you. God bless and have the best of days.